Uh, last but by no means least, uh, uh, another great friend of the Institute of Economic Affairs. He's been the Member of Parliament in the Conservative interest for North Somerset since 1992, held a number of positions in government, most recently serve, serving as Secretary of State for Defence in the last coalition government. Liam Fox is the author of Rising Tides, Facing the Challenges of a New Era and creator of OneMinuteFox.com, <laughs> which, much as I love Fox News, I prefer to Fox News. I, I would point you towards OneMinuteFox.com. And in a recent speech at the IEA, just the Monday before last, Liam touched on how the UK could restore sound monetary policy and adopt a more realistic approach to the fiscal challenges we face, a, a theme I'm sure he'll expand on this evening. Please give a very, very warm welcome to a devout defender of free markets and capitalism, the Right Honourable Dr Liam Fox MP. Well, I, was called, I was told to keep it short, especially after last Monday, so uh, I shall attempt to do so. Um, I had a discussion with the, the Prime Minister, and as we talk about these things in the Conservative Party, he said that he regarded himself as a Liberal Conservative. How did I regard myself? And I said, I regard myself as an unreconstructed, free market, Thatcherite, unionist, Eurosceptic, Atlanticist. <laughs> and, uh, you, you might wish to judge how long the silence was before the next sentence. <laughs> so it's no surprise that I entirely welcome the Paragon Project. There was a time in our politics where it was fashionable to think the unthinkable. Now it's unfashionable to think. <laughs> and we have got to the Gobi Desert uh, of political uh, uh, novelty uh, in, our, in our politics today. And I think that this project is coming along at exactly the right time. We have never needed it as much as we require it today. When I was at the Ministry of Defence, uh, General Sir David Richards used to say to me, Secretary of State, there's only one thing more difficult than getting a new idea into the head of the military and that is getting an old idea out. And if that is true of the military, let me tell you, it's true in spades in politics. And we have to get some big old ideas out of our heads if we're to be able to get some new ideas in that we absolutely must do. And we talked about one uh, a little bit at the IEA last week. And that is that there is still this view in politics about our intergenerational relationship that uh, a stereotype that we have poor pensioners and rich children and therefore we must load the dice in favour of the pensioners at the expense of the working population. And that could not be more untrue than it is today. And one of the things that I hope this project will tackle is that enormous project now of getting us to think differently about that intergenerational problem because it's actually been reversed in recent years. And we have a growing elderly population, and I take this as just one political example, a growing elderly population and a falling working population. And that has very profound consequences for us, because if we're to keep the same level of pensions and benefits, but a diminishing working population, we'll have to apply penal rates of taxation to them, which will be adverse for our economy. If we're to keep the same levels of pensions and benefits, but not apply penal rates of taxation, we require a bigger workforce. And that means more immigration, another issue we would have to look at. And if we neither want penal rates of taxation nor a bigger workforce, we cannot have the same level of pensions and benefits. It is not mathematically rocket science, but we have to start to tackle this. And just as we have failed to get across to the public the differences between deficit and debt, so we've now got to start tackling a very difficult uh, case about how we change this intergenerational uh, relationship. We've got an age dependency ratio, which is rising now from 300, uh, where it's been steady since the 1970s, to 500. And that's the ratio uh, of uh, the number of pensioners to those in work. And we have always, many of us will have made the political case that we have to protect pensioner benefits because they're unable to go out and work, whereas the working population can go out and increase their own income. That's no longer true because a lot of the retired population now have assets that their children may not ever be able to achieve, especially housing assets. And that profoundly changes that social balance. And that's something that we have to very quickly get a grip of because otherwise we're going to get a breakdown in that intergenerational compact and that leaves the market open politically for those who may be a lot less responsible 
than we've seen in recent times. And all of this debate, as was pointed out in the film, is being carried out in an environment where you'd believe we were in an era of fiscal neutrality. And I sat and listened to the debate this week about tax credits, and no one's actually talking about the real issue, which is the debt tax. And every single taxpayer in this country is paying £2,000 in extra tax this year just because of government debt interest. And it is completely immoral, in my view, to spend money you have not got, pass it on to the next generation, and, by the way, expect them not only to deal with your debt, but to provide us with the, the benefits that we think we should be taking for granted. None of this makes political sense, and I hope the Paragon Project will deal with it. But I wanted to end with just a little cautionary tale that goes a little bit wider. Uh, a few years ago, and I described it in the book, I was at a meeting in the Elysee Palace, and I said, why was it in the Cold War? that we were willing to use the word better, that capitalism was better than command economy, that democracy was better than tyranny, that human rights were better than oppression. I said, and nowadays, when we talk about Islamist fundamentalism, we're not really willing to say it, because I believe that religious tolerance is better than imposed orthodoxy. I believe treating women as equal citizens is better than treating them as second-class citizens. And the answer was interesting. It said. Well, actually, I don't think we can say better nowadays, only different. <laughs> if we only believe that we are different and not better than the alternatives, why would anyone else believe us? And it's not just in the spheres I mentioned, but we are who we are because of conscious decisions that we have made, of our systems of government, of our systems of economic, of our institutions and our law. And we have to champion those values of competition, of free markets and sound money, because at our best they have made us what we are. And we have to be believers. And tonight I'd like to thank the IEA for being believers. We need you as never before, and we'll be with you. Thank you.